بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الصلاۃ والسلام علیکم یا سید المرسلین و رحمت للعالمین الحمد للہ کمنگ ٹو استانبول این ٹرکی ہیز آلویز بین اسپیشل فار اس کمنگ فرام اجمیر شریف ان ہندوستان اینڈ وی ہیو بین کمنگ ٹو ٹرکی فار اے وائل فار لاسٹ ٹین ٹویلو ایئرز وزٹنگ کھونیا شریف اینڈ آل دا بلیس مقام اینڈ دس ٹائم اٹ از اسپیشل بیکاز <clears throat> of this academic symposium being organized at an academic setup in those Kudar University uh, initiated by the Institute of Sufi Studies along with the Karim Foundation, the Hazrat Hassan al Abul Hassan al Kharkani uh, Foundation and all the associating uh, partners like Trucker as you mentioned. So I think it is extremely important to have a global exchange of wisdom. Wisdom is omnipresence. Like, you know, in all the ages, like if you talk about Hazrat uh, Abul Hassan al-Kharkani, uh, anhum, you know, 10th century, almost thousand years back, those words of wisdom, that even today, after 1000 years, when we read those words, when we hear those words, and we meet people who are part of those words, we are transported to those times when these teachings, these wisdom were shared with the masses. And we think that we are living in a challenging time in the 21st century, but back then in the 10th and the 11th century, there were much more challenging times to humanity. In that setup, when these wisdoms coming from the Islamic perspective and the awliyas and the friends of Allah, I think it is extremely important and what uh, is happening in this symposium is, is a collective uh, celebration of that wisdom from Mashriq or Maghrib, from East to the West. Uh, there are scholars, there are uh, elders as far as from America, there are people from uh, Central Asia, there are people from South Asia. So it's really a celebration of wisdom, joint celebration of wisdom where everybody is coming together honoring the blessed words and the khizmat, the service towards humanity which was brought forth by the awliyas and particularly for this symposium uh, the focus is on Hazrat Khaja Abul Hassan Kharakani uh, and his lifetime and uh, uh, it's so interesting that back in India also we have such an important uh, share, uh, tradition of sharing these stories. Uh, we say Sina Basina. This is heart to heart transformation of knowledge. Even if the words were not into the written text, but through the oral tradition, they have been passed on to generation to generation. Like the first mention of Hazrat Abul Hassan Kharikani, radiallahu into the Indian subcontinent was brought forth by uh, Data Ali Hajwari in his book Kashif al Mahjub, and so forth. And he is also uh, in the 10th and the 11th century, at the beginning of the 11th century, uh, based out of Indian subcontinent in the city of Lahore. So I think this is so important for the younger generation to know this interconnection of spirituality, especially brought forth by the Sufis who literally lived back then without borders. And even today, we are living without borders. So it's really coming home in Turkey. Well, uh, alhamdulillah, that we have such forums and platforms uh, that we are able to bring forth that essence of those teachings. In today's world where people are becoming very selfish, the youth are not being able to share, and, and there, is a, there is a spiritual bankruptcy, there is a moral decay. We might be, of course, progressing in terms of the world. In this dunya, we are exploring a new mediums of communication, social media is happening, all the youths have all that information technology, artificial intelligence, that is okay. As the times are changing, we have to adapt to the modern technologies, living standards, lifestyle. But at the same time, if these advances, technological advances, are not backed up, or human advances, you know, in all sciences, if human advances are not backed up by the spiritual foundation, then we have seen in the past that just, you know, if you are looking at uh, the dunya without having the foundation of spiritual insight, then such societies have been collapsed. 
the moral bankruptcy, the moral decay that is coming up, I think this is so important that through the academic institutions and academic setups, you know, there are dargahs, there are turbays, there are maqam, people are going for pilgrimage, they're going for ziyarat, there are shab in Konya, like a lot of people come, and that is of course a personal experience. And uh, that is also very essential in today's time that people come out to celebrate such events and occasion. But when we are in an academic setup, like uh, here in Uskudar University, there are young students, young children from all fields, all sciences they are studying here. If they get just a glimpse of it, if they just get a, a light, you know, like a spark into the spiritual foundation, I think that will really hold them into the future of becoming uh, insani kamil you know that is the whole essence that we have to strive to bring people towards reaching the goal of becoming insani kamil that we become perfect in our all our aspect and attributes while we are serving to the dunya and also our inner essence has to be very strong uh, so I think this is a very welcome step. We congratulate to all the organizers and uh, especially our Hoja Jamal Noor and she has been such an inspiration uh, to millions and millions of young uh, people I really admire. We often talk about uh, her teachings in India back to especially the young people when we are addressing. Uh, uh, so recently we had invited uh, uh, Kareem uh, Jamal Noor Hoja San to India just because of this uh, uh, initiative that the Indian uh, young audience should know that how beautifully these spiritual teachings are shared with the young generation there. So it is again, as I said, the inter exchange of something which is already connected into the unseen world. It's like Sufis always live with, without borders. And even today they continue. It's up to us how we transcend beyond borders, beyond language, beyond culture to the oneness of being and it comes to serving humanity. Inshallah, Allah give us the tawfiq and we pray that this forum, this institute of Sufi studies grow multifold. Uh, it has already, you know, from again, from Mashriq to Maghrib, you have already a presence in America to Japan and literally uh, in, in China. So it's really amazing. And we uh, hope and pray that Allah give a lot of barakah and himma to everybody who is supporting, who is involved together with Jamal Nur Hoja, may her spiritual insight behold everybody around her, inshallah. When uh, Kirim uh, talked about the symposium is happening and when they send me some of the writing, then this particular saying is such an important connect. Because uh, of course now, since we have started learning our formal education and tasawwuf started, uh, we know about Hazrat Abul Hazrat Tarqani, his life and times and message. But even before my personal uh, formal education started from childhood, without even the mention of Hazrat Harakani, it is so important to know the practices at the Chishti Dargahs, which is so much similar into these saying. So we have been taught even before knowing formally about the life and times of Hazrat Abu Hassan al Kharkani radiallahu anhu that from childhood our elders used to say about Ajmer Darga Sharif that whoever comes to the Darga never ask their name, never ask their religion, never ask their nationality or language or where they come from. If you have to ask them, ask them one thing what can you do for them? How can you help them? And extend the langar, the Sufi meals to whoever comes to the Darga. And if Allah has blessed you with the means to support people who come and ask you some help, go out and help them in the best of the manners. If you can't, then raise your hand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray for those who come. And the serving of the food is so essential practice of the Chishti Dargahs across India, not from now, but from last 800 years. Uh, because India is a land of many religions, we have Hindus, we have Christians, we have Sikh, different faith people, and they all come to the Dargah. Every day we get about 40,000 people coming to the Dargah from all faith perspectives. And the food that is served, especially inside the Dargah, to all the people who are coming is strictly vegetarian. Why vegetarian? So that people from all faith can sit together at one table spread and eat without reservation. That is why uh, vegetarian meal and it has been taught to us that take care of the people who are coming and take care of their heart 
none of your action, words, behavior, or any tradition should break a human heart. Like we have a large population of Hindus who don't eat non-vegetarian because of the religious practices or eating habit. But once you spray, put forth the vegetarian meal, everybody can sit together. That's the Sufi wisdom. So beautifully done. What exactly Hazrat Abul Hassan Kharkani has mentioned in the 10th century, that never, don't refuse anybody who comes to the door of Abul Hassan Kharkani radiallahu Serve everybody food. So this is such an essential thing that he's saying the same thing. Then don't bother about their religion, their faith, where they come from. Just be in service. And this is in practicality happening in Ajmer Sharif every day. That people from all faith coming, eating food, having the langars. And uh, Alhamdulillah, this is something which connects beyond borders, as I have said earlier also. The essence of khizmat, service towards humanity, is the foremost. As Hadith Khaja Moinuddin Chishti has said, of course, your namaz, your prayers, your roza, everything is important, essential. But this is not for God. This is for your own spiritual enlightenment and upliftment. If you want to serve the Creator, be in service toward the creation. Make no difference in serving the creation. And that service is only going to take you close to the Creator. Everything else that you do is for your own spiritual enlightenment. That's why Hath Khaja Mohinuddin Chishti, one of the famous saying about him is love towards all and malice towards none. And then he elaborated that if one has to develop a kurbat, closeness to the creator, develop three attributes of the creation into your being, into your daily practices. Sun-like bounty, grace, earth-like hospitality, and river-like generosity. Because sun, earth, and river, their job as part of the creation is to serve without making any distinction. Everybody gets the warmth of the sun. Everybody's earth is hospitable to everyone. And the rib river, flowing water of the river, never ask who is drinking from it. It's just serving. So these, when you look at the similarities and the essence, word might be a little bit, you know, different, but the essence is the same. So Alhamdulillah, we are glad that in, the, in today's time, in the 21st century, we are sharing those wisdom, we are living that, and, and we are striving to, to honestly serve these sacred trust. Because these teachings, these things are not just words, these are the Mukaddas Samanat. These have been the Mukaddas Samanat which have been passed on to our elders, to their elders, to their elders, from generation to generation. These Mukaddas Amanats has been passed on. Sometimes written, sometimes unwritten, spoken, unspoken, heart to heart, sina basina. And if we are able to take these feelings through practical realization of this Mukaddas Amanat, I think that is the purpose of one's life, to be able to keep up to these Mukaddas Amanat, which have been passed on to us. Inshallah, Allah give us the tawfiq to be in service and uh, let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our khizmat with the wasila of these great awliyas from Khaja Abul Hassan Kharkani Hazrati to Khaja Mawinuddin Chishti Hazrati to Mawlana Rumi to all the way to Hazrat Kanan Rifai Hazrati and continue even today in the form of Hazrat Jamal Nur Hoja, inshallah. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.